Hi, first of all, thanks for coming to this presentation. I hope it's gonna to be very interesting for you because this is a use case of a real product that we are building linking several cool technologies. Okay, this is the agenda. And to begin with, uh, who I am. I am going to introduce myself, but only a little bit. My name is Rafael Rios Moya. I am a software architect, passionate about technology. Uh, here is my Twitter, where I usually post that I believe can be interesting. If you have some question, this is the channel. And my GitHub, where I have uh, some projects. You can take a look and feel free to open an issue or give me a start, okay? Uh, the companies. Uh, BI Geek is a company created in 2015, no, in 2015, sorry, <laughs> by a group of professional experts in business intelligence. We offer service in business analysis, solution design, BI, and big data. If you are more interested in the work of BI Geek, we have a stand outside and we are happy to answer any questions. And BI Geek is a partner of Together Bank. But what is Together Bank? This video will explain it better than me. And doesn't work. <laughs> Imagine a bank for people like you, created in a collaborative way by people like you. Imagine the result. Download the app and sign up with a European ID or passport. Get an IBAN and a debit card in three minutes and discover the economy beyond euros, pounds and dollars. Obtain a global vision of your finance, adding accounts from other banks and controlling them all from one unique app. Discover not only how much you spend and on what, but also how much money you will have daily for the following year. Activate automatization of your economy through artificial intelligence. Your telephone bill is 26% higher than usual. Do you want to check it? Yeah, please. Collaboratively buy assets with users from the whole of Europe to obtain savings. And when you want, you can pay with them, sell them, or trade them for other assets. Access a global offer of investment products, loans, or insurances provided by fintechs and banks from around Europe. Send money off to your friends through contacts or through your favorite app. Point your card against the balance you want in each moment. Forget about the abuse of commissions. Join the revolution and help us to reshape the future. More people, less banking. Together Bank, the first collaborative bank. I love it. Together. It's a financial platform that the, through the aggregation of three parties, services, both fintechs and banks, allows the integration between users and companies in a single interface. But not only offers a complete banking service, providing an account, a debit card, or allowing the transfer of funds among other functions, but also allows contracting of other financial products through this marketplace. We are working to integrate, to integrate the best financial offers for the users. Thanks to blockchain technologies, contracting, management, and exchange of non-financial assets 
with non-fiduciary currency like minutes of telephone, gigas, gas, gasoline, or whatever you can imagine, etc. Or et Allow payments with cryptocurrency is another awesome future we are working on. Imagine paying your coffee with Ether or Bitcoins or manage your crypto wallet like a bank. For us, your crypto balance is part of your economy. And we are working to link the traditional economy with the new economy. Tomorrow, Salvador Casquero, one of our CEOs, will have a presentation where we will explain all these concepts. And if you don't know anything about blockchain, this is the presentation for you. And finally, we use big data and machine learning technologies for liquidity predictive models, credit scoring algorithms, and product recommendation system. The purpose of this is that the user have the analysis of their own economy because they want all their information with the minimum effort. Okay, first, we consider, because we are working with blockchain technologies, developing a DApp, a decentralized, decentralized app. Who knows what is a DApp or decentralized app? Nobody? Okay. A decentralized app is a backend code running on a decentralized peer to peer network. In our case, Ethereum network. This means that the backend is composed by smart contracts and a front end. Who knows what is? a smart contract in Ethereum. Oh, one, thank you. It's the way that Ethereum have to run code inside the network. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, with these tools, we have the following architecture. You can see in this image how Ethereum network works. Assists several participants of the network, all participants comfort the network and use it. For example, if one user needs to do an action in the blockchain, they use their node to do it. Because all network have all the apps with all contracts. Remember that every node contains all blockchain data. But no. Okay, sorry. But with this implementation we have difficult problems to solve. Firstly, how to teach non-cryptocurrency -crypto users how it works and how to use it. For example, their credentials are managed by the user. Secondly, the problem with some integrations. For example, the, in the integration with a message broker like RabbitNQ, very since there isn't an easy way to implement it. You had to generate a proxy or a gateway to connect it. Thirdly, the legal problem. Cryptocurrencies are legal in Spain, but, but using it in a bank carrier, it has a lot of legal problems with a difficult solution to implement. Okay. For this reason, we change our vision and we design a backend based 
in microservice, but our idea is migrating to a decentralized app. In this first version, we have a partnering bank that acts as the custodian of real money reserves and is responsible for all the movement in this environment. On one hand, we generate all API to be integrated with our partner. And on the other hand, we define all smart contracts in our private blockchain, where we generate a digital ID for every user and offer them all our services, like a two-way card, a bank account, the possibility to use tokens, etc. Together Bank is responsible for maintaining the balance between real money and the blockchain token. In summary, we centralize of all the movements that occurs in the blockchain environment. All these platforms are hosted in cloud service and on bare metal servers. Also, our vision is to finish in a DApp. This means that little by little, we are going to migrate the application per modules. And with this image, we can see this migration. We will move some modules to the public blockchain. But others are still in our private blockchain. This means that the integration with our partner bank changes. It now takes apart the public blockchain. Okay. okay, but so what exactly is the backend challenge? To begin with, we have to migrate the application in an easy way with microservice architecture, we can migrate it very simple because isolation is switched between them. And we can build adapter easily of the parts migrated. To continue, the scalability of service services is very important considering the integration with big data environment and blockchain. It is of vital importance that the performance of the global platform, for this reason, a microservice architecture is needed. And furthermore, thanks to the microservice architecture too, we can use the programming language adapted to the use case we have. For example, if one executes a machine learning model and the model is written in Scala, we build the microservice in Scala too. Our database backend stack is formed by a Cassandra, Elasticsearch, and a PostgreSQL. But thanks to our microservice architecture, we can select the best database for our use case in each microservice. But this has a dark side. On one hand, you have the best data approach, but on the other hand, you have several data sources to ingest in our BI environment. Why don't you use, the question is, why don't you use exclusively blockchain with a database? Blockchain stores every transaction generated in this environment. And consulting them 
could penalize the user experience. The previous database are used like a cache system, storing all, uh, all operation, but for blockchain and from other application source, and making faster and better the user final experience. Imagine that. For every user request, we have to obtain all blocks, and for every block, all transactions, and search it in every one the information of the request. Okay. For developing it, the framework select is Spring Boot and Cloud for the following reason. It's easy to learn. There are a lot of public documentation about the framework. Have nice integrations. The Spring ecosystem has a lot of modules for integrating different technologies. And finally, Spring 5 has an awesome reactive extension. Our architecture is hexagonal and is prepared for this chain. For run this, in this case, we are using Docker containers. Allows the application to be isolated into containers. It's well support. There is a good community where we can find a lot of Docker images. And finally, we use Kubernetes to manage all these containers. The reason is Kubernetes supports multi-cloud provider and on-premise data centers. Additionally, is it able to connect several Kubernetes clusters? For the deployed software, it comes with a self-repair and health check capabilities. And it is prepared to auto-scale the software in base of service demand. Oh, sorry. This image is an example of our architecture works. We have Zool for routing. Oh, sorry, this not this. Sorry, for routing or request to the microservice. Of course or our securities. The requests are balanced between them. And thanks to Kubernetes, every microservice use multiple metrics to auto-scaling. Every microservice is configured using a central configuration server. In our case, a Spring Cloud Server Config. Thanks to it, we have all configuration of every environment in our Git repository. And it is very useful. Ethereum private network is installed on Kubernetes. In advance, I will go deep to explain how and why we take this decision. Finally, to connect big data and backend environment, we are using Rabbit and Q. When you have a microservice architecture, it's very, very important the automatization of all deploy process. In our case, now we have around 30 microservices. And for us, it's crit a critical step. Manage the environment without control is hell. We define this flow to generate all our deployment. We use Git flow to manage all Git branches. With a Jenkins pipeline, we generate automatically the following steps. First, we generate the software packets. 
and unloaded it to Nexus repository. Secondly, we generate the Docker image and store it in an Nexus repository too. And thirdly, we deploy the new image to the Kubernetes cluster. But depending on the branch, it uses one, names one namespace of another. We have here two considerations. All give flow steps are managed by Jenkins. If one developer wants to create a feature, the developer has to go to Jenkins. And here there is a task to create the feature. For every git flow step, exists a task in Jenkins to do it. And Nexus has several repositories for a lot of technologies. It's very easy to use and save a lot of work. Big data integration, integration big, let's go to talk with big data integration. The big data, big data team use the informational database to get all accurate data. In this case, it's a Cassandra. But depending on, on the use case needs other tools. For example, Neo4g. We use Neo4g database to create and store graphs used in the recommendation engine. We have this following task. We generate a PPM values, generation from user data, a forecast prediction, and generation of these models, a product recommendation based on the economic profile of the real user and his needs. And finally, a credit scoring calculation. Okay. These tasks need time and a lot of resources to execute. But we don't need, but we don't need it, the result in the real time. For this reason, we apply an even driven architecture. The backend doesn't have the logic about when to start the task. The backend send every event of the platform to big data environment using Revit and Q. There are a lot of big data listeners with the same, it's the same architecture of all microservices, ingesting all the events and managing the execution of the Spark jobs. All of these execution are fire and forget. This means that we have alarms to detect if a pro process was wrong. Now we are working in this part because it needs, needs more automatization. And we are in Big Data Spain, and the question is, why not Kafka? To take this decision, we did this table to compare both systems. To know what is the best for our use case. We take the decision with Revit NQ because it supports several standardized protocols and accept complex routing scenarios. And we needed it for our architecture. And let's go to talk, to talk about blockchain integration. We need to build our private Ethereum network and it must be full scalable and readable. For this reason, we deployed it in Kubernetes. But it's very important, it's only accessible by a Node.js 
API. We use Node.js because all connection libraries have more maturity in JavaScript. We store all account keys in secret vaults. We use this network for tokenization and the transaction of the user inside the bank. To deploy our private Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Let's go. To deploy our private Ethereum network, we define a topology of nodes. The nodes are packaged in Docker containers using Go Ethereum. We have minor nodes, they mine all transactions of the Ethereum, other nodes are transactional, attempt to expose the blockchain API to our Node.js API, um, a backup node. This node saves all blockchain data in a cloud storage. When a miner or a transactional node needs to scale, use this backup to start the Ethereum node. If not, when a new node starts, spend a lot of time to synchronize, to synchronize all blocks. All remember that all nodes, nodes needs all network data. And with this topology, we have a private Ethereum pool scalable and recordable in case of disaster. And let's go to talk about the public network. Okay. This graph, oh, sorry. Here is the transaction of Ethereum. It's incredible how the Ethereum network is growing. In this graph, we have the number of transactions in the main network. Over 500,000 every day. And in this, we have the number of new address of Ethereum network over 100,000 every day. This number are awesome, with no central, no central servers, with the rules of the blockchain, and being open. In the public network, we manage the wallet instead of the user. We create a new address for every user and store it in a secret vault. If the users want to use cryptocurrency in our platform, need to transfer it to our address. We don't have a Ethereum node connected to mainnet. We use a service that provides the full API of Ethereum. We use in full. If you want to use the Ethereum node API, and you don't want to load all blockchain, it's over 40 gigabytes, I recommend use this service. We use it to, in, to generate integration to payment with crypto and transfer between Ethereum accounts. Oh, sorry. And that's all. If you like the project, okay, oh, sorry. The project, we are preparing an ICO. If you want to invest, we, are, we have all the, all the social network open for your question. And I am open for your question now. And that's all. Thank you. <laughs>